Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much uh, for being us today. Well, the, as noted by everybody, uh, there was an emergency. They closed the consultation meeting of the UN Security Council on May 16, the concerning to successful test fire of the new ground-to-ground -ground medium long-range strategic uh, ballistic rocket Hwasong-12. And there was a press conference held jointly by the representative of the United States, Japan, and the South Korea uh, before the Security Council meeting on the same day as well. Today, I would like to express the position of my government uh, with regard to these issues. As everybody knows, under the direct on the spot guidance of the respected Supreme Leader, the Kim Jong un, the test far of a ground to ground medium long range strategic ballistic missile, Hwasong 12 was successfully carried out on May 14 by scientists and technicians in the field of the rocket research. As broadcasted through the media, the successful test fire of Hwasong-12 that shows highly developed stage of science and technology in the field of national defense attained by, attained by the DPRK is of great and a special significance in ensuring peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula and the regions. However, the United States and its vessel forces describe this legitimate exercise of the right to the self-defense as violations and the threat, and the raise the clamor of the sanctions and the pressure against the DPRK uh, the pulling up the DPRK of the ballistic rocket launch in the meetings. DPRK categorically and totally reject the United States and its vessel forces that called into the question of the DPRK's bolstering nuclear deterrence for self-defense as the behavior of the undisguised encroachment and high-handed outrageous interference in the internal affairs against the DPRK and condemned in strongest terms as the UN Security Council, which played the tune to the United States again. <laughs> what is more, <clears throat> what is more the, the serious is that the United States are crying out for sanction resolutions, uh, which have lost its uh, legitimacy of the legality and impartiality and intimidates the international community and inspire others with highly intensified sanction and diplomatic pressure against the DPRK, the claiming that all countries are decided whether they support for DPRK or the United States. On the war, the misleading the fact the self-defensive measures of the DPRK to bolster the nuclear deterrent as the threat to the whole the international community. They store up the public opinion of the threat from the North Korea and beg for the support and collaboration of the international community in rumors of dialogues by clocking the true nature of their behavior of pressures. As witnessed by everybody, uh, the main root cause for grave situation on the Korean Peninsula that inched to the brink of a war and in clouded with the nuclear attack of the land is lies on the entire hostile the policy and the provocative the maneuvers of the United States. The joint military exercises key resolve and the Foul Eagle 17 the stage by the United States of the Korean Peninsula, fully introducing our largest massive aggressive forces 
and all st strategic assets sufficient enough to raise out the another full-scale war, a most dangerous and the reckless aggressive war drills that constitute the grave threat to the peace and security on the Korean Peninsula and beyond the regions, an act of the state that sponsors terrorism against the sovereign state. There is no such a, such a critical moment like this has ever been experienced during past the period of a far over half a century's long history of the confrontation between DPRK and United States when the military provocative maneuvers of the United States reached extreme aggressive and the bellicose in its nature. Such a kind of the ex excessive military provocation of the United States are still continue even currently at this moment after the joint military exercise are ended over. Still now, the United States, the nuclear war asset, such as the nuclear aircraft, carrier strike groups, Calvinson, and forming ranks, the notorious nuclear strategic bombers, B-1B, are hovering about the waters and the skies of the Korean Peninsula to carry out the civil warfare drills for associated marine sea and aerial battles and the dropping nuclear bomb the target on the GPRK. The reality clearly proves that the United States is only ring leaders of the aggressions and war, destroy, destroyer of the peace, the principal offender who raised the tensions on the Korean Peninsula in its intentions. On this occasion, I would like to make an issue of the behavior of the UN Security Council and the UN Secretariat that blindly they follow, follow the US policy. The United States has, as everybody knows that, the United States has carried out intercontinental ballistic missile test far on May 3rd in the wake of one on April 26th at a time when the situation on the Korean Peninsula has reached an extremely dangerous pace due to ever largest joint military drills waged by the United States after introducing huge nuclear strategic asset and military provocation moves conducted by it. The sophism of the United States claiming that it may carry out missile launches but not GPRK and that its launch a contribution to the peace and security, while the one by the GPRK is a provocative, provocative straining tension, it's really hate of double dealing standards. The United, UN Security Council has kept mum about United States test far of ICBM, which flew more than 6,000 kilometers across the ocean, even while they crying out for denunciation and a sanction as for the ballistic rocket test for DPRK carried out in its own territorial land and waters. UN Security Council is called into question only that DPRK is a ballistic rocket test for while turning blind eyes to the United States ICBM test for under the pressure of the United States high-handed arbitrary practice deserves the name of the double dealing standard security council or the United States Security Council. If the UN Security Council does not call the United States to account for its aggressive and provocative the large scale joint military exercise and ICB, ICBM launches, DPRK will never recognize any UN Security Council resolution taken over the DPRK's ballistic rocket launches, but continue to disclose the absurdity of the UN sanctioned resolution. The act of the UN Secretariat is identical. As regards the successful test for of ground to ground medium range strategic ballistic rocket, by the DPRK, 
Uh, the UN, Security, U, UN Secretariat issued the statement of a spokesperson for the Secretary General, in which condemned this alleged exercise of the right to self-defense, describing it as in, in violations in the Security Council resolution and the threat to, to peace and the security in the region. If it is really the UN Secretariat of it, life is the impartiality and its independence, it must distinguish who is responsible for the current severe situation of Korean peninsula and should behave impartially and with caution. I would repeat my words again. The current situation on the Korean peninsula is open in Gulf in a touch and go the state to bring of war, whose root cause clearly lies on the United States that introduced various sort of nuclear strategic assets, including nuclear aircraft carriers, to halt the provocative, aggressive war exercise with the South Korea, one after another, in and around the Korean Peninsula. It is by no means accident. There being raised serious concern of the United States threat to the DPRK, including joint military drills among our neighboring countries. Therefore, the DPRK has made the request to the Security Council on the several occasions to discuss those joint military exercise with strengthening the peace and the security on the Korean Peninsula as emergency agenda and send a letter out to the Secretary General as well, are demanding him to bring attention to the issues to the Security Council. However, turning its back to our fair demands, the UN Secretariat has rather picked a quarrel with our legitimate exercise of a right to self-defense against the United States nuclear threat and blackmails as a violation of the sanction the resolution. To add more, the Secretariat has kept silent to our request for organization of the international forums for legal export to clarify the legal basis of the those sanctioned resolution that's still to this moment. It is unspeakable for the Secretariat to argue about the implementation of the sanctioned resolution while not clarifying their legal basis. As we are, there, we are disappointed. That we are disappointed at the weakness of the secretariat that could not make a decision, if not issues of organizing the international forum of the export, a legal export, to elucidate the, whether the resolution is legally right or not. And before picking a quarrel with the DPRK, with the strengthen it the self-defense nuclear forces to to counter the United States with trifles militarily with non-nuclear and weak countries, the UN Security Council and the Secretariat should just calmly who maintains the peace in Korean Peninsula and keep impartiality and the prudence in dealing with the international matters. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate it, the solid peace and the stability in the Korean Peninsula and the region will be possible only when the military hostile actions and a chronistic anti-DPRK the policy of the United States are the principal offender of the test of the tense situation comes to an end. Explicitly speaking, the DPRK nuclear deterrence for self-defense and the preemptive strike capability aimed at the United States trying to antagonize isolate, stifle the DPRK. Accordingly, they can never be any political and economic bargaining chip. They will never be abandoned through the, though the United States will rack it up the sanctions and the pressure to utmost. If the Trump administration had truly want to adopt a new policy towards the DPRK, and drawing the lesson from the preceding the administration's failure, it should go for replacement of the armistice agreement between the DPRK and the United States, and a peace occurred, 
and a total removal of hostile relations so as to help ensure the lasting peace of the Korean Peninsula and furthermore global peace and security. If the United States persists in enter the DPRK the sanctions without understanding its rival, the administration so will have to take full responsibility for the ensuring catastrophic, catastrophic the consequences. The United States should mind that the DPRK nuclear strike capability will be strengthened and developed at a rapidly high speed as long as the United States insists its entire policy, nasty nuclear threat and blackmail and the sanction and pressure. Thank you. All right. Uh, now we'll take questions. Uh, since the time limitation, we'll take few. Uh, so I'd like to hope you to focus on the topics. And I also would like to remind of your brief introduction before question. All right, let's go ahead. Yes, madam. Well, my name is Shauna McGee from Kyoto News. And on behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association, we thank you for this opportunity. Um, I would like to ask about an issue that's in the news much today regarding cyber attacks. Uh, we understand that a 1718 panel member was hacked by someone pretending to be another member of the panel. And um, there is some suspicion North Korea is behind this, as is the WannaCry. We do not have an opportunity to ask you, so I hope you can give us some reaction to these accusations. Any reaction would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Yes, uh, Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press. Um, in, in your remarks, sir, uh, you, you specifically focused on the United States' role in the Security Council. As you know, there are five permanent members of the Security Council with veto power, including China and Russia. Uh, they chose to support the uh, sanctions that have been imposed in, you, in the resolution so far. Are you saying that... Um, uh, that they are completely under the sway of the United States and, uh, and, and are doing its bidding. Uh, and secondly, you said that um, you know, miss, the missiles that have been fired have been in, your, in DPRK's own territorial waters. Well, one actually went into the uh, economic exclusive zone of, of Japan, and I think the last one was 60 miles off the coast of Russia. It landed. So could you clarify that? Thank you. Right. Yes, sir. Sure. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Closing for Access. Thanks again for the, doing the briefing. I wanted to ask, this, this request you've made to the Secretary General for a conference of international legal experts, the spokesman here won't even confirm getting the letter. Can you, can you say, when you, when you respond, a little bit more how it's, how it's delivered and, and what you make of the spokesman not even wanting to acknowledge receiving a letter? And I separately wanted to ask you about there's a, there was a patent application made through the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, for sodium cyanide. And it's turned into, it's become a controversy. And I wanted to know, WIPO seems to say it was an individual applicant named Zhang Hua Ri. And I wanted to know, is, is, are, there, are there individual entrepreneurs applying for patents, or is this, in fact, a government application? And if so, what's the purpose of the, of the uh, patent application? Thanks. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for the opportunity today. Uh, my name is Hiramoto Anippon Television. Um, uh, regarding the missile launch this time, the Japanese government also strongly condemned um, this time also. And uh, my question is, do you have any special comment on Japanese government, especially on the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe? Thank you. Yes, madam. Yes, Rosalind Jordan with Al Jazeera English. Mr. Deputy Ambassador, could you please explain in more detail the government's request to discuss the armistice with the Trump administration? Under what circumstances would these uh, negotiations or discussions take place? And is the DPRK willing to return to the six-party talks format? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for your briefing. My name is Sato from NHK. Uh, my question is about the, the last week. Uh, your mission has announced to media that uh, you to send a letter to all the uh, member states uh, to ask 
uh, reconsider the uh, implement a sanction uh, until the legitimacy of the Security Council resolution has uh, proved. Uh, did you get uh, any response from the, uh, some of the member states? Thank you. All right, uh, my ambassador will uh, give you answers. Thank you. They, uh, As far as the question to raise this concern, the, I would like to answer it. The, it's uh, some category of the similarity in order to help the, uh, the understanding in comprehensive way. The first, the recent uh, the the move of uh, the Trump, the administration as regard to the policy of the GPRK. As everybody knows that, you know, some the Americans has gestures, you know, the dialogue. That shortly, what is important is not war, but the actions. What we found from the DPRK the US history, the rolling back the hostile policy towards DPRK is the prerequisite for solving all the problems in Korean Peninsula. Therefore, the urgent issue to be settled on Korean Peninsula is to put definite end to the US hostile policy towards DPRK, the root cause of all problems. It is the stand of the, DP, of the DPRK to continuously develop more precise and diversified NUC and the nuclear strike means and push ahead preparations for more tests till the United States and its vessel forces make a proper choice with the regions. Uh, so relating the you know the cyber attack, now this is a linking to the DPRK. Yeah? Uh, it is uh, the ridiculous. Whenever something strange happens, it is the stereotype way of the United States and the hostile forces that the kick off noisy anti DPRK campaign, deliberately a linking with the DPRK. Yeah? As far as the question, you know, the, the China and the Russian they support the, the, the Security Council resolutions, you know. The both China the, and the Russian, they are our close neighbor of the traditional the friendships. They understand our nuclear possession occurred the, through the U.S. continued nuclear threat and its hostile policy towards the DPRK. However, the nuclear weapon states has their own common interest as the nuclear weapon states. And this is the you know, separate issues from the bilateral issue. Thank you uh, for today. Uh, once again, so thank you everybody for being with us today. I'll see you again.